Apologies that this video was a little bit delayed. I've been away for the Christmas period, but a lot of you have been asking me in the comments over the past sort of few episodes of the series, how do I install uh, Game of Thrones to get it to work with Crusader Kings? Because since Holy Fury has been released, it's been broken. Um, now, I should stress before we go into this that yeah, that the Game of Thrones mod isn't updated for Holy Fury yet, so it doesn't have any of those new Holy Fury features. Don't bug them on the forums or anything like that, because it's probably going to take months before it's actually ready to be released for Holy Fury. But to roll CK2 back, you do have to take a few extra steps to make sure that it works, because since Holy Fury came out, it's not quite as easy as it used to be. So, hopefully, uh, with this video, you guys are going to learn how to do that. In the description below is a step-by-step -step guide. If some of you find that easier to follow, then please go ahead and check that one out as well. So, the first thing you need to do is, on your installation of CK2, again, I'm doing this for Steam, if you've got it some other way, you're on your own, honestly don't know what to do for that one, but with the Steam copy, it's, it's fairly straightforward. So, the first thing you want to do is come down to your uh, CK2 Holy Fury DLC, if you've got it, and untick the box to make sure that it is uninstalled. If you don't do this, you'll get issues with Eastern graphical faces. Holy Fury changed a lot of that, and just reverting back to the previous version of CK2 will still break some of the portrait hacks, it'll be playable, but it'll look a mess. So the way to fix that is make sure before you do anything else that your Holy Fury DLC is disabled by unticking this box here in Steam as I've done there. Next step, right click on your copy of CK2, go to properties and head over to the fourth tab here, the betas tab. Make sure that the beta you're opted into is the old version of CK2, so that's 2.8.3.4, available there. Um... I think 90% of you, well, probably all, almost all of you, will only have this one available to you. If you are one of the people with the extra stuff, make sure you pick in 2.8.3.4 and not any of the other versions of 2.8. It's the most recent version, and that's one Game of Thrones. That's one I'm personally using, and that one, that one runs absolutely fine. So once you've done that, you'll need to update your version of CK2. So you'll probably get a Steam download queued up. Now, I've already done that, because obviously I've been playing it for the series. Um, make sure that that download fully completes before you move on to the next step. Uh, that way that you're ensuring CK2 is rolled back correctly. One way to check that is hit the play button. And then in the top right-hand corner of the launcher will show your current game mode. Make sure... Hang on, let me bring that over. Make sure that it does say 2.8.3.4 up here in the top right-hand corner. Easiest way to tell as well, you won't have the Holy Fury background. You'll have the old DLC layout. And obviously there won't be Holy Fury on this list either. If it looks like this, you're ready for the next step. The next step is to go and grab the mod files from the official website here. So that's agotcitadel.boards.net. A full link to this particular thread will be available in the, in the description. So this is the developer's owned forum. Um, you can also get it from ModDB, but seeing as this is the sort of direct line to the devs, and this is the best place because there will also be some guides if you're struggling with any anything else I haven't covered in this video. The other reason for doing this, and this in my opinion is the best method of doing it, and the one that I'm going to hopefully get you all to do today, is go and grab the Mac Linux zipped files here. Even if you're not on Mac, even if you're not on Linux, if you're using Windows like myself, you still want these. These are the zipped up files, and this will make it easier to install. It's just a simple case of drag and drop. You don't need to worry about anything else. Ironically, the installer, I've personally had more trouble with than just using the zip files. So if you're someone with um, a non-standard Windows installation, if you have your mod files somewhere else, if you have your My Documents folder somewhere else, like I do personally, the installer doesn't work. Or at least it didn't work for me personally. Um, it installed the file somewhere completely different and it didn't show up in the, in, the, um, in the launcher for CK2. So by grabbing the zipped files here, it's going to make your life a lot easier. This will open up a media fire page, which I assume is going to be covered in ads um, by Seagate today. Go ahead and hit that download button, and then we're going to get yet another goddamn ad, seriously. That's going to take however long it's going to take. When that's done, you want to open that up for the next step. So this is the last and the easiest step of the mod installation. You want to go over to your Documents Paradox Interactive Crusader Kings 2 folder. Again, go for the My Documents one, not the Game Directory one, because if you put mods there, they just won't work. My Documents Paradox Interactive CK2. Go into the mod folder. Now, don't worry if your folder doesn't look like this at all. This is my own personal CK2 file, so obviously it'll look completely different for every person. Go into the mod folder, and then you want to take the Game of Thrones folder from... This, this is the, uh, the zip that you just downloaded. You want to take the Game of Thrones folder from there, and also the Game of Thrones dot mod, and then you want to drag that into, oh, genius, you want to drag that into this folder, and let it copy over, this might take some time, depending on, uh, it'll look like this, might take some time, depending on what type of PC you've got, but that is the final step, that's all you need to do, and when that's copied over, you'll have these two files now in your mod directory, make sure you haven't got anything else running alongside it, some mods from the workshop will be compatible, but obviously they're most likely being updated for Holy Fury, so might not be compatible with this version of CK2. Not only that, but they might not be compatible with the Game of Thrones mod either. So, so tread with caution when you're playing with other sub mods. 
I will personally show you my modness in a second, but for those of you who are just here for the installation, you are now done. Congratulations, that's everything. Last thing to do at that stage is open up Crusader Kings 2, go over to the mods tab, and make sure it's enabled. After that, you should be good to go with the uh, with the portrait fix working, th thanks to disabling Holy Fury here. You should be good to go. And it will just say Game of Thrones for you guys, but for me personally, this is what I'm running, so if you're trying to copy my particular mod list, I've got, uh, obviously, the Game of Thrones mod itself. We've got a Revolutionary Borders mod, which is available on the Steam Workshop. Better Faces, which is available from the sub-forum of compatible mods on uh, the Game of Thrones website I was talking about earlier. Links to this is all in the description, like I said. So I've got the Better Faces sub-mod, which uses some of the portrait DLCs available for CK2 and adds them into the Game of Thrones world. Bloodlines mod um, essentially gives the Great Houses of Westeros, a bit irrelevant for my game, I guess, but gives the Great Houses of Westeros their relevant bloodline traits, so House Baratheon will get one, House Targaryen, House Tyrell, etc. We'll all get their own bloodline, which is inherited to their children. Gilded Republic is my own mod available on the Steam Workshop. Redoes a lot of the trade building, well, it completely redoes the trade uh, building system, uh, ports, that type of thing. Adds extra trade routes to Essos, Westeros, and the Summer Isles. Um, also gives you a custom start that I played through in the previous series of Game of Thrones. So if you're interested in that, that is available on the Steam Workshop as well. I've got the Artifact Acquisition mod, which allows us to steal artifacts. Again, one of my favourite mods, because I, uh, I think it's always quite a fun little distraction, isn't it, from the regular gameplay. Available on Steam Workshop. Same with Artifact Search. Allows you to quickly search up artifacts in the character finder, or for search for characters with artifacts. Again, available on Steam Workshop. Bigger interface for Game of Thrones is sort of available on the Steam Workshop. You have to look for the Bigger Interface mod, and then on that, uh, on that mod page will be, I'll see if I can find it very quickly here. On that mod page will be a link to a Game of Thrones specific one. So if you go Bigger Interface, um, you're looking for, I guess, this one. Oh, there is Bigger Interface for a Game of Thrones, which could also work. I'm not using that one personally, because there is on the Bigger Interface page a separate download link. Try either. If not, this is the one I personally use. Like I said, this mod here will, uh will be the one to get it like mine if that one doesn't work. Then we've also got Flame Queen's Ultimate Building sub -mod. This is an absolute pain in the ass to find because it's unfortunately not available on the official forums anymore due to them moving their website. I will put a link to this one in the in the description below as well. Adds all of the new buildings to the game. Really completely changes the way uh, the game mechanics. It sort of makes up for the fact there's no technology in the Game of Thrones world. Makes it all about building and obviously, you know, holding, development, that type of thing. One of my favourite mods. Interface Century Gothic and Stellaris Colours, available on the Steam Workshop. More artifacts available on the sub forum, which I'll have already linked if you followed for any of the other same page as the Better Face and the Bloodlines mod. And Obligation Law Opinions means that if you have, say, um, low vassal tax or, or low vassal levies or low feudal obligations, they'll actually like you. Um, the way it works in the mod currently is that it's only the person that changes the laws that gains the opinion bonus. Everybody after that just defaults back to the regular thing. Didn't really make sense to me, seeing as in the base game, obviously, if you've got low feudal obligations, they like you more. So that might be a little... That's more of a quick fix than an actual mod. But that's my personal mod list. For those of you who are here for the installation, don't worry about any of that, because that's, that's irrelevant. Um, I hope this video has helped. Again, if you've got any thing you need to ask, leave a comment here. Um, don't forget to check out the official sub forums as well for, you know, sub mods. Um, for any tech support they can offer. Try not to spam it too much, because, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty nice for them trying to ruin it. And, uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much that. Good luck. And again, anything else, let me know in the comments. And uh, have some fun playing Game of Thrones.